Hello, my name is Avery with Online Income. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a PayPal add to cart button. Now, you will need at least a personal account for PayPal, but if you have a business account for PayPal, you'll be able to have more features that you could use for your PayPal buttons. I will also say the process of making a add to cart button is the same as doing a buy now button. But if you haven't seen my other video for the buy now button, make sure you keep watching this because you'll figure out how to make a buy now button as well. So right now I'm on my dashboard and from here, I want to go directly up to tools, highlighting on tools and bring you down to the menu. And right now I'm just going to go to PayPal buttons. That says, which button would you like to add? You, you can see you have smart buttons, buy now, add to cart, donate, subscribe, installment plan, and automatic billing. But we're going to go to add to cart. Create PayPal payment button. Now I'm on step one. There's three different steps, but let's go ahead and stick with step one. Choose a button type and enter your payment details and choose a button type, which is a shopping cart. And if you can click on this and then a uh, menu will come down and we're just going to stick with shopping cart. We got the item name and I'm going to fill this out how I did with my last video, which is exactly how I would make a add to cart button for my wife's website. What she does is she makes faith based planners and her planner is called the Destin planner, um, which by the way, I will leave a link in the description to her Instagram page. But the name I'm going to go with is Marbella because she's she's coming out with two different. She's coming out with two different planners. One's called Marbella. The other one's called Hosanna. So we're going to go ahead with Marbella and we're going to go ahead and also put in a item ID and I'm going to go with 112 for the item ID. I can go ahead and put in a price here with the currency and the currency could change depending on the country you're at. But instead of using the price here, I'm going to go down to customize button and put the price down there because I also want to add options. You also have the add drop down menu without the price option and you just have the add text field for the name for the drop down menu is going to be date that's going to put down option one is going to be six months for the planner option two will be 12 months and option three will be 15 months all right and we'll start at 35 55 and 75 Let's see. Now we're going to go ahead and put done. We go ahead and see over to the right. We have exactly what it looks like. What people are going to see the date range, six months, 35 and we go to the menu, 12 and then 15. Exactly how I want it. I don't want to add a text field, but if I checked on that, I can go ahead and put something down for a title or anything else. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. I got the shipping and I have my tax. I can just use a flat rate for the shipping. Or I could put it as free. If, if I was going to leave it for free, I would just leave it blank. But let's just say I want to use $7.99 for shipping. And then tax rate is going to be 3%. And then I go down to the merchant ID. Now you have the merchant account ID. I can use my secure merchant account or I can use my primary email address. Now, there's a reason that if you do have a business account, you would rather use your merchant ID over your email address. And it says more and it'll explain right, right here. It says, if you select this method, PayPal links your merchant ID to your primary email address so it isn't visible to spammers. If you have a premier account, your email address might still appear within the head tag of your checkout page. And as far as the primary email address, this method will show your primary email address and the button code, making it visible to spammers. So the point is you don't want to have the problem of spammers. Let's go ahead to step two. Step two, track inventory, profit and loss. Now, if you have a business account, you can use this. If you don't have a business account, if you have a personal account, you won't be able to use this. So 
let's go ahead and go down save button at paypal track inventory and track your inventory let's track your profit and losses once again all this has to be with a business account but i'm going to go ahead and save my button at paypal i want to go ahead and track my inventory i'm not going to attract the profit and losses here so let's go ahead and go to track inventory click on that i'm gonna go ahead six months 12 months or 15 months i can go ahead by the option and put individually the options that are in quantity or i can go ahead and just do by the item which is marbella which is 112 and just do the quantity in stock and i'm going to go ahead and do it like that because once these planners are gone uh, we'll have to re-up or in other words we we'll have to get more so my quality my quantity in stock is 750 and my alert quantity is at 100 so when i get to 100 or less i'll go ahead and receive this notification that i'm running low can customers buy an item when it's sold out i'm going to click yes if you don't want them to have that option you click no and then you would put down a url that would take them to a, a page that would show the sold out that would show it that mm, i said it wrong you would take you would put in a URL to take them to a page that says it's sold out. That's what I wanted to say. Step three, which is also optional. You can customize the checkout pages. So can your customer add special instructions and a message to you? Yes or no? I'm gonna click yes. Do you need your customer's shipping address? I would in this particular situation because they're getting the physical package. Take customers to this URL when they cancel their checkout and you check that box and put in the URL. Take customers to this URL when they finish the checkout. And once again, you put in URL for that. And then you have advanced variables and you can use a break line in between each variable. And then you have an example right at the, on the right side. I don't have any advanced variables that I want to use for this. So I'm just going to go ahead to create button. now we are at the button code for the web page so we are done with making the button we can see how the button is going to look over here on the right this is how we want the button to look it might look a little different on your actual web page but for the most part that's how it's going to look at any rate you have the code you want to select the code and then you're going to copy the code and what you want to do is go to your web page you want to open up the website editor so you can see the code for the website. You want to figure out exactly where you want to put this code at. So, you know, where you want it to, to appear on your web page. And then you're just going to paste it and click it in, you know, save and publish the page. And then it should show up. And that's it. So you now know how to make a PayPal at the cart button for your web page. Another thing I want to say is if you have a business account, you also have an option to have an email URL up here. So you won't just have to use the website editor. So that's also cool. And that's it. Like I said, man, you just have more options with the business account over the personal account. The business account is free. I mean, I'm talking it up, but I mean, I'm not getting paid for it just for the record. But I'm just saying like it just has more options to use the, these PayPal buttons. But anyway, I'm Avery. This is Online Income. Hopefully you find the information useful. If you did, please like, subscribe, share with a friend. Stay in tune for more videos. I'll be doing more of these buy now PayPal buttons very soon. Thanks for watching.